Hello, George Romanich here. In today's video, we are going to talk about Mirage. After watching this video, you will properly understand this interesting phenomena and you will be able to walk down the street and show off to your friends in disco clubs. Some of you might say, but why such an abrupt change of subjects compared to your previous few videos in which you talked about variations of temperature, pressure and density with the altitude in our atmosphere? My answer is that this is not an abrupt change of subjects and you will see in today's video that Mirage is actually caused by variations of air density. This air density is in turn caused by completely crazy and steep temperature lapse rate very close to the surface, hot surface. All these are related to something called autoconvective temperature lapse rate and what that is and how that is related to the phenomena of mirage will be explained right now. Let's get into it. We will start by considering hydrostatic equation dp dz is minus rho g. This is a backbone of atmospheric sciences. It tells us how pressure changes with the height. P is pressure, Z is height, rho is density of air, and G is gravitational acceleration. We combine this equation with the ideal gas law that says P is rho R D T, where R D is a gas constant for dry air and T is temperature in kelvins. Here we are assuming that air is perfectly dry. If we want to account for uh, moisture, then temperature should be virtual temperature. But I will do that sometime in the future when I explain the meaning of virtual temperature. For now, we just assume that air is perfectly dry. Now I will differentiate this equation with respect to height. That will give me dp over dz is equal rho rd dt over dz. Remember that in this video rho is constant. Now I can combine hydrostatic equation and this expression over here noticing that rho and rho will cancel and I will get that dt over dz is equal negative g over rd. And this is temperature lapse rate in the atmosphere with constant density. We see it is a constant value g over rd. Kindly remember that the value of g in our atmosphere is 9.81 meters per second squared and Rd is 287.058 joule per kilogram per Kelvin. So if we plug in these values we will see that this dt over dz is equal minus 34.1 degrees Celsius per kilometer, not meter, kilometer. Furthermore, we call this temperature gradient autoconvective lapse rate. And we say, therefore, gamma auto is minus 34.1 degrees Celsius per kilometer. I hope that you can immediately can recognize from this discussion the following. If dt over dz is larger than gamma auto, density will actually increase with the height. And this is something very, very interesting. So if the temperature gradient in the atmosphere or temperature lapse rate exceeds this value, density will actually increase with the altitude and this is something we don't experience every day indeed. Let me also explain you why this is called autoconvective. 
if the temperature gradient exceeds gamma Otto, we will have a situation, let's say this is surface of the Earth, that density will increase with the height. So we will have, let's say, at this height above surface, high density, and close to the surface we will have low density. But denser air will spontaneously sink down, and that's why we call this temperature lapse rate autoconvective, because vertical motion is auto-generated, and there is no need for some external forcing. I would also like to mention that this condition is called density inversion. We know that temperature inversion is a situation with, where temperature increases with height. And now we know that density inversion is a situation where density increases with height, but notice it is highly related to temperature gradient. Now, this condition of density inversion is also responsible for something amazing in our atmosphere, and that's mirage. And now I would like to connect this knowledge with uh, the phenomena of mirage. But before I do that, I will just qualitatively explain some basic principles of uh, light refraction. I will not go into any equations, but kindly note that everything that I will say here follows from Snell's law that I believe you learn in high school. Let's say I have a plane and here I have high density, high density air and here I have low density air. Now differences in density of air will result in different behavior of light traveling from this region to this region. Let's call this region 1 and this region 2, okay? This is not some sharp surface, okay? This is just to indicate that here density of air is somewhat higher than here. Now these two regions have different what we call indices of refraction, N1, N2. N1 is actually larger than N2. What this means, again without equations, that in this region over here, light travels slower than in this region over here. Be okay, let me just write, because N is defined as C over V, and uh, C is speed of light in vacuum, and V is speed of light in some medium. So the higher N, as you can see, the slower the light travels in that medium, and light travels slower in high density air than in low density air. Now, let's just assume there is one light ray coming from this point onto this boundary between high rho and low rho air. And this is a vertical. What will happen in this situation that this light ray will be refracted towards the horizontal or away from the vertical, like so. And this is explained by Snell's law, as I said. This refraction is a consequence of different indices of refraction and therefore different uh, propagation speed of light in these two mediums. One more thing related to this business that we need to understand before I explain Mirage is the following. If I have the same situation as here, but let's say the incidence angle of light is large, and this is the incidence angle, is large, then the light cannot be refracted, but it has to be reflected, like so. And there is a critical angle for which this will happen, and that angle depends on uh, N1 and N2 for these two mediums. Now, when we understand this, and we have knowledge of what I explained above of auto-convective temperature lapse rate, let's explain mirage. Here is surface of Earth, here is uh, a person, let's call that person D. And some distance away is another person, let's call that person R. It's very, very sunny day, 
So the surface of the earth is extra hot. Relative to the surface of the earth and the air right above the surface, somewhere here above, air is, I will say, colder. I say colder because it's not cold, it's just colder in respect to what is very close to the surface. Height or vertical z-axis is like so. Now let's plot density profile against height for this situation over here. Because air next to the surface, let's say this is asphalt or something, is very, very warm. The temperature lapse rate can actually exceed autoconvective temperature lapse rate and therefore in some region very close to the surface, let's say up to this height, density will increase with the height. So density will increase with the height because here we have extra hot air and then as the temperature lapse rate drops below autoconvective, the density stays pretty much the same or some small variations with height. And then if we go very far away from the surface, density starts decreasing as we know from my previous videos. Now we will combine this information over here with light optics and this figure over here as follows. I will take light ray coming from this point into my eye. And let's call this light ray A. This one is traveling, as we can see, through relatively constant air density and it will just have straight path, no problems. I see the top of the head of R. But now, let's look into a light ray going down towards the surface, like so. I will tell you how this light ray will behave and then I will explain it. This light ray will bend like so. Why would it bend? To explain why, we have to go back to this figure. Notice that in this case, light ray is going from high density air to very low density air. If it is going from high density to low density, it will bend towards the horizontal or away from the vertical, as I explained here. And then, as it is bending more and more, at certain point, the incidence angle will exceed the critical angle. It cannot refract anymore, so it has to reflect. It's called total internal reflection. It has to reflect, but when it reflects, it is traveling now from low density air to high density air, and it will refract towards the vertical, which means it will curve up and it will arrive into our eyes just like this. I will just explain it one more time briefly. A light ray is going towards the surface. As it is doing so, it is traveling from high density to low density region. This results in the refraction of light towards the horizontal. At certain point, the angle of incidence exceeds the critical angle, refraction is not possible, we have a reflection. As a consequence, the light ray bends up. As it bends up, it is traveling from low density to high density region, and it is refracting towards the vertical, which means up. And eventually it arrives in our eyes. But as a consequence, if I project now the line of sight of this light ray over here, it appears as I am seeing this person appearing from underneath the earth and moreover being upside down. You might say this R is coming from hell. And it's definitely devil because it is walking upside down. But in this case, there is no hell involved. It is just reflect, reflection, refraction, and autoconvective temperature lapse rate. As a side talk, can you see how this can also happen if you are 
in a very cold region, let's say this is North Pole, D is over here and a bear is over here. Some distance away, this is polar bear. Here is extra cold now. And therefore, some distance away from the surface is warmer. Again, warmer in respect to what is very close to the surface. Now, there is a light ray coming from this bear into my eye. And there is no problem. I see bear. But at the same time, there is a light ray going up into the sky. But because in this case, light is traveling from high density to low density, it will be reflected towards the horizontal at some point, we will have a total internal reflection and it will bend down. Of course, I exaggerated it here uh, because I don't have a, a lot of space to put objects far away. But in this case, if you project line of sight of this light ray that arrived into your eyes, you will see that this bear is hanging upside down in the air. So in very cold climates, we can have opposite, but in both cases, this is called mirage. And you see that mirage is nothing but consequence of auto convective temperature lapse rate. Just to finalize something that uh, I actually now forgot to mention, why do we see sometimes water over here, a mirage, and quite often in desert people see water? Well, you see water because far away there is no person to see and you have a light from the sky being bent down and then arriving into your eyes. If it happens from the sky, then this image of the sky over here looks like a smeared surface like water and you tend to see something that appears to be water. But there is no water far away. In this case, there is only significant change of air density with height and autoconvective temperature lapse rate. Density inversion and the concept of autoconvective temperature lapse rate and how these are related to the phenomena of mirage in our atmosphere in the case of warm climates as well as, well as very cold climates. Who knows, maybe this video can even help you fighting a polar bear in an unfortunate event you encounter one somewhere in the wilderness. I would like to mention one more thing here that I didn't talk about while explaining Mirage, and that is that this phenomena of light beam being bent in a medium characterized by differences in uh, air density can be explained using the concept of least time or Fermat's concept of least time. And that theorem or concept says the same. Light that travels between point A and point B, let's say point A is polar bear and point B is your eyes. Light between these two points will travel along the trajectory that will take least time to traverse this distance. That means the light that leaves the head of that polar bear estimates every possible trajectory in this universe and figures out that this parabolic trajectory that I explained here will take least amount of time to arrive at your eyes. Imagine that philosophically, this is crazy. And this is called Fermat's principle of least time. Why would that trajectory be parabolic, you might ask? Well, remember, the air above at some altitude is warmer than air very cold in the case of this polar bear. And in warm air, less dense air, light travels faster than in very dense air close to the surface and light beam takes that into account, quickly calculates all possible trajectories 
and says, okay, this trajectory is the best one, I'll take that one. And as a consequence, the person that is looking at polar bear will see polar bear levitating in the air being upside down. But the light beam doesn't care. It just wants to get to your eyes as quickly as possible. So you have to pay that price. Until next video, goodbye.